fail. I pray, Lord, touch everyone in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you build up everyone. Raise up everyone. And whosoever is weak in the mind or weak in faith or weak in any way, strengthen in Jesus' name. Your people will not get empty handed. Confirm your miracle upon everyone. We thank you because we know it's such. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Matthew chapter 11. Verses 4, 5, and 6. Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things do ye do hear and see. The blind receive the light, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have gospel preached to them. And said, blessed said, is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. The background to this story is that John the Baptist had been arrested by Herod. He was put in, he was put in the prison. But then John had been talking about Jesus. He's the one coming. He's the very son of God. He's the lamb of God. He is the representative of the almighty God here on earth. He has come to reverse the, the fall, fall of Adam. And everything we lost in Adam, he has come to restore unto us. All of a sudden, the same John was arrested. And so he wanted to know everything I said about Jesus, all the revelation I gave about Jesus, is it true? Are you the one to come or should we wait for another? Maybe in your mind you are thinking, is Jesus going to be the one you are waiting for? Or should you wait for another? Will he heal you? Or will it be another that will heal you? Will he deliver you? Or will it be another person that will deliver you? Will he bless you? Will he save you? And will he supply all the needs of your life? Or do we wait for another? And the Lord Jesus then sent back to him. Go tell him that this is what is happening. And because of all this is happening, we know that Jesus is the one we are waiting for. Tonight, Jesus is the one you are waiting for. He saves, He heals, He delivers, He restores, He removes mountains, He solves problems, He destroys the works of the devil. He is the one you are waiting for. There is no other one in your life that is going to bless you. Jesus will bless you tonight in Jesus' name. The blind receive their sight. It will happen to you. The lame walk. It will happen to you. The lepers are cleansed. It will happen to you. And the deaf, they hear. Have you listened to some of the testimonies we have heard? The ones who are hearing here at the headquarters and the ones who are hearing in every region, in every state, in Nigeria, in every nation, in Africa and beyond. As we are having testimonies, we are giving testimonies here, they too, they are giving testimonies. Great things God is doing. It convinces us that Jesus will solve your problem. You don't have to wait for another time or another personality. Jesus is the answer to your problem. But now, look at verse 12. In verse 12, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. You will take your miracle tonight. The force of faith, the fervency of prayer, will give you everything you need from the Lord tonight, it will grant you in Jesus' name. We're talking about the old time power 
of our unlimited God. Three points very quickly before we pray. There's still prayer tonight. I said there's still prayer tonight because the power of God is still going to work marvelously in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Number one, the supremacy of the unlimited God. The supremacy, the sovereignty, the greatness, the most high place that he occupies, the supremacy of the unlimited God. Number two, the short-sightedness of limiting God. Anytime we limit God, we're short-sighted. We're measuring God with our own little strength. We're measuring the power of God with the scientific knowledge of man. We're looking at God as if God were a human being like us. And it's short-sightedness. I pray that God will brighten your sight. It will give you revelation. When you see the revelation of God, your God will be big, your problems will be small. Number three, the supernatural signs from the unlimited God. Supernatural signs from the unlimited God. Number one, let's look at number one, the supremacy of the unlimited God. Luke chapter one, supremacy of the unlimited God. We're looking at uh, chapter one of Luke. And reading from verse 35, the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy sin which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. The power of the Holy Ghost will overshadow you tonight. In the case of Mary, it was to be a fulfillment of the prophecy given 700 years before that a virgin shall conceive. But logically, it was impossible, but it happened. Historically, it never happened before, but it happened. Something is going to happen in your life. It may look biologically impossible, scientifically impossible, historically impossible nationally impossible but it is going to happen in your life in jesus name the power of the holy ghost will overshadow you in verse 37 for with god nothing shall be impossible with god nothing shall be impossible and mary said behold the handmaid of the lord be it unto me according to thy word. That's all you need. That's all you need to say. Anytime you see a great promise of God, a mighty promise of God, as if this may not, how will this happen? How will that happen? And then you are told it's the power of the Holy Ghost that will do it in your life. Then all you say is, Behold, a child of God. Be it unto me according to thy word. It will happen to you. Look at Job chapter 42. Job was sick. Job had lost a lot. Lost children. Lost property. Lost his talk. The herds. Lost everything virtually, literally. And he lost his health. The man might even have preferred to die. But he came to the realization as you are coming tonight that our God is unlimited. Your God tonight is unlimited. And He's for you. He's your Father. He's your Creator. He's your Redeemer. And He's the one that has prepared everything for you from this day onward. You will find impossibilities becoming possible. You will find great things happening from this day onward. The moment you realize this our God, this my God is unlimited. Look at 42 of Job, chapter 42 of Job, verse 2. I know that thou canst do everything. When you come to the realization, I know my God, he can do everything. Are you barren? He can give you children. Have you lost job? He can give you jobs. Have you lost your peace? Is the prince of peace? He'll give you peace. 
is your problem overwhelming you as if you cannot take another step again it will raise you up from that value of despondency new life will come to you again i said new life will come to you again i know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from thee the moment you confess that you know all the chapters from chapter one of job to chapter two to chapter three he was complaining he was talking to his friend i know i'm all right i don't know why this has happened i wonder the day i was born and then the friends will say you must have committed secret sin if there's no sin in your life why would all this calamity be on you then he will reply them again i don't understand i look for him here i look for him there i couldn't find him but and the problem remained there days of complaint complaint does not remove problem murmuring does not uh, remove problem sorrow does not remove problem crying does not remove problem argument does not remove problem but the day he said i know that you can do everything and that no thought can be withholding from you the moment he said that look at verse 10 and the lord turned the captivity of job and the lord turned the captivity of, the day you realize that this our god is unlimited and you voice it out lord i thank you you are my god god i know that you are my creator i know you sent jesus christ to save me you sent Jesus Christ to give me life and life in abundance. The moment you confess that with your mouth, things will turn around in your life. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. 2 Kings chapter 5. We're looking at it from verse 1. It says, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto, it, unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. He was a leper, great man, but a leper great warrior but a leper a great professional but a leper he had a great position but a leper great privilege but a leper rich man but a leper and then in verse 3 and she said unto her mistress would God my Lord what with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy he didn't know about any program, about any prophet, about Elisha. He didn't know. But these maids that they are taking from Israel, the land of Israel, said, If my master will, be, will go to the prophet in Samaria, just like all these testimonies were hearing, my sister told me to come. My uncle told me to come. A medical doctor told me, Have you heard something is happening there? Go. And then they come. As somebody told Naaman, somebody has told you, and you are here, you will not be disappointed in Jesus' name. And then in verse 8, and it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore, as thou rent thy clothes, let him come now to me and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel let them come they will know there is a god in the land the god of abraham isaac and jacob and the father of our lord jesus that your father my father our heavenly father he will roll all their problems away in jesus name and then the lord, the lord told elisha what to tell him Go jump in Jordan seven times. Leprosy will go away. Your flesh will come back. All that incurable disease, everything will go. Can I tell you something? Leprosy at that time was incurable. It was a disease that nobody ever got any healing from. It is like HIV AIDS today. And also it carried a terrible stigma on the people. And today, our God who is unlimited, 
it will take HIV AIDS away from you in Jesus name and then eventually they pleaded with him when he wasn't going to do what the prophet had said and then verse 14 and then went he down and did himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and it was clear it will happen to you I said it will happen to you all the rubbish that the devil has put in your life until this day the Lord will clear everything away all that the enemies enemies of progress enemies of righteousness everything they have heaped upon you the Lord will clear everything away in Jesus name the heavy load on your head every load on your neck every load on your mind every load in your family that you are saying how will this problem be solved thank God tonight the problem is solved in Jesus name in John chapter 5 John chapter 5 I'm reading here from verse 5 John chapter 5 verse 5 and a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years can you imagine somebody carrying problem for 38 years 38 years just problem 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 a person that was born at the time that problem started that fellow is married now that fellow is already having children now and the man is still in that same problem do you know that the long-standing problems mountains were brought here tonight the Lord is going to take everything away 38 years it will solve the problem 40 years it will solve the problem 50 years it will solve the problem rest your mind we come to this God who is unlimited the supremacy of the unlimited God the sovereignty of the unlimited God the greatness the might the strength the extraordinary power of the unlimited God look at verse 6 when Jesus saw him lie lying down and knew that he had been now a long time in that case he says unto him will thou be made whole the impotent man answered him sir I have no man maybe that's what you are saying I have no man but thank God you have Jesus I said you have Jesus I have no helper you have Jesus you're a widow I have no husband you have Jesus you're a widower I have no wife but you have Jesus you are barren I have no child but you have Jesus and you don't have anybody that will help you you feel lonely you feel alone as if the whole problems of the world they just heap it upon you and there's nobody to even share it with thank God Jesus the friend of sinners Jesus the healer of the sick Jesus the liberator of those who are bound Jesus is for you tonight it will solve the problem in Jesus name he says and when he saw him lie there he said will you be made with he said I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool but while I am coming another step down before me and Jesus said unto him rise take up thy bed and walk rise take up thy bed and walk it has happened again I said it has happened again 38 years of problem in one sentence everything vanished away tonight is your night I said tonight is your night long standing problem of many years everything gone and immediately 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 the man was made whole and he took up his bed and he walked and the, on the same day was the Sabbath day well that shows us a bit we cannot read all the references because the whole Bible is full of the majesty of God of the greatness of God of the power of God let's go to point number two the short-sightedness of limiting God anybody that limits God and say can God do this can God do that can God do? that's limiting God I have HIV AIDS can God heal me that's limiting God what's HIV AIDS in the presence of the Almighty God 
have tuberculosis can god heal me that's limiting God. tuberculosis in the sight of the unlimited god i have a, you know a child that has a problem of epilepsy can god heal my child that's limiting god can god do it can god? of course he can do it and tonight he will do it i thought you were still awake that amen will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name look at psalm 78 psalm 78 i'm reading here from verse 19 psalm 78 psalm 78 and let us see that god is a god of power a god of miracle and anybody that says, can god do can god do this that's limiting god psalm 78 verse 19 yeah they speak against god they said can god furnish a table in the wilderness there's no farm there are no grocery stores there's no place to buy this from buy this from can god furnish a table in the wilderness well you know the answer god surprised them god will surprise you for 40 years 40 years every day of the 40 years he gave them manna coming from heaven every day and they said can god you cannot limit god he can and he will look at verse 20 behold he smote the rock that the waters gushed out and streams overflowed can he give bread also can he provide flesh for his people we're talking about two million to two and a half million to three million people how are we going to get water to drink this is a desert place and this is a wilderness look at all these multitudes of people if we dig a well we're not sure we're going to get water and as we travel in the desert the place is so dry can god give us water he said moses take the rod in your hand go to that dry rock there and strike it and water came out it will satisfy you i said it will satisfy you we cannot limit god that's the point i'm making anybody trying to limit god can he open the eyes of the blind can he make the limb to walk can he make the short legs grow can he give jobs to the jobless can he provide this can he provide that's limiting god he will he will he will in your life in jesus name look at verse 41 in verse 41 yea they turned back and tempted god and they limited the holy one of israel they limited the holy one of israel they remembered not his hand anytime anybody is limiting god he doesn't remember he doesn't remember what god had done see what god has done since god brought us this period of revival every time we come every time we come he's giving us testimonies here and then in all the various states testimonies are going on all the regions testimonies are going on all the all the nations testimonies are going on he has done it for others your turn has come i said your turn has come nobody now can say well he did that but he cannot do my own you have had problems that are more serious than your own problems that are as serious as your own problems that people are thinking will take it overseas maybe they'll solve the problem there he did it for them here this is the place of your miracle this place god established this place because of you god brought this revival time because of you anytime you are weak anytime you are sick anytime you have a problem remember the unlimited god is here for you every problem will be rolled away in jesus name you will not die prematurely you will not die before your time everything the lord has appointed you will do here before you go for your reward you will do an accomplish in jesus name look at verse 42 they remembered not his hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy how he had wrought his signs in egypt and his wonders in the field of zoan because they didn't remember what they ought to remember 
That's why they limited God. I will not limit God. I said I will not limit God. Your miracle is on the way. Second Kings chapter 7. The short-sightedness of limiting God. The short-sightedness. Can he heal me? Can he do it tonight? Can he bless me now? Can he take all this sorrow away? All this bad luck, all this curse, all this yoke, all this torment of the enemy, all this shame, all this stigma upon my life. Can he brighten my life? Can he make me to go in the path where I will feel satisfied, feel fulfilled, feel honorable? Am I going to carry this kind of shame and reproach for the rest of my life? No, you will not carry a reproach anymore. I said you will not carry a reproach anymore. We must not limit God. God will do what he has said he will do. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. It will be unto you according to your faith. Second Kings chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 1. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king lead and sat the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, might this thing be that's limiting God? They had been in famine for many years, seven years, and it appeared, How will this ever end? And they came to a very serious situation. They were eating what they shouldn't be eating. They lost all compassion of their neighbors. They lost compassion even for their children. Because the hunger drove them to the very extreme. And then the king came unto, unto the man of God. And the man of God said, By this time tomorrow, the problems of many years will be over. As you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll find the problems of many years, they are all gone. What you have cried about for seven years, for ten years, for fifteen years, you wake up tomorrow, praise the Lord, no tears anymore, no sorrow anymore. All the heartache is gone in Jesus' name. This man, limiting God, he said, if the Lord will open the windows in heaven, might this sin be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Look at the punishment, and look at the judgment, and look at the burden that came upon him because of limiting God. You will not limit God anymore. What cannot God do? He can turn everything around in a moment of time. And all this, you have a reason for coming here. You have a reason for saying, you fasted, you waited upon the Lord. There's a reason for that. That reason why you are waiting upon the Lord, the Lord will answer your prayer. And when he says this is what he will do, there is no point still limiting God and saying, Oh God, how will that happen? Daniel chapter 6. In Daniel chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 19. Daniel chapter 6. We're looking at verse 19. Here the king already knew that Daniel was in the lion's den and he didn't know what God will do he was limiting God in so much look at verse look at verse 19 then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions and when he came to the den he cried with a lamentable voice that's how you know the people that are limiting God no joy of their faith there's no strength of faith. There's no great expectation. He cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And 
the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able? Is thy God able? Is thy God able to deliver thee from the from the lions limiting God? But well, thank God Daniel did not limit God. If your name is Daniel, be like this Daniel. Be like this Daniel. You will not limit God. And if your literal name is not Daniel, be like Daniel yourself. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to find God true and be faithful to God. And that same faith of Daniel, let it surge up in your heart. That even if you are in the midst of lions, in the den of lions in your community, those lions of an enemy will not do anything to hurt your life in Jesus' name. Is your God able to deliver you from the lion's den? And then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and he has, and he has shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And as before the O king, I have done no hurt. The Lord will send his angel to you. Everything you need protection, he'll protect your life. Provision, he will supply your need. He will supply all your need according to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You will not limit God in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 1 Luke chapter 1 the short-sightedness of limiting God the short-sightedness of limiting God Luke chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 11 Luke chapter 1 verse 11 it says in verse 11 and there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right hand of the altar of incense and when Ezekiah saw him he was troubled and fear fell upon him don't be afraid don't be afraid god is sending something good unto you all your prayers of these many years god is sending the answer to you you know the barrenness of many years you think now there's no hope anymore hope has come for you in jesus name but the angel of the lord said unto him fear not Zacharias, for as thy prayer is heard and thy wife elizabeth shall bear his son and thou shalt call his name john thou shalt have joy and gladness thou shalt have joy and gladness Zechariah is not here i'm talking to somebody here Thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Something is going to happen to you, many will rejoice. Your family will rejoice. The people that knew you before, and they said, ah, so and so, so and so, so and so, as if the end has come for you. You are just beginning to live now. A new strength, a new power, a new energy, a new provision coming upon your life in Jesus' name. And he shall be great. What will come out of your life will be great in the sight of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. But many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit of and power of Elias, that's of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Here is limiting God now and Zechariah, verse 18, verse 18, Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this, for I am an old man. And my wife Elizabeth, well stricken in years, limiting God, limiting God. The angel said, Your prayer is answered. Why did you pray if you are not expecting God will answer? Why were you asking God if you are not expecting a response from the Lord? Your prayer is answered. It's not only the prayer you have prayed tonight, all the prayers you have been praying before, and you have given up, and you thought God did not hear. Of course, God heard. He reserved the miracle for tonight. He reserved the power for tonight. 
all the and all the prayers of pray god has bundled everything together and the answer is coming to you tonight in jesus name and then uh, the grass said you know how can this be look at the answer now verse 19 and the angel answering said unto him i am gabriel that stand in the presence of god and i am saying to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings and behold thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that this thing shall be performed the things are still going to be performed that that's that that's the irony of it that even though Zechariah limited god god proved to him that he is an unlimited god god will prove to everyone he is unlimited what you are thinking is so big and is so great and it's impossible in a very simple way with the snapping of the finger the lord will do it for you in jesus name but he became deaf he became dumb all the period elizabeth was was a pregnant elizabeth still got pregnant john was still born and when that child was to be named the miracle happened again he began to speak clearly again and he rejoiced the miracle of god you will rejoice in that miracle in jesus name point number three now supernatural signs from the unlimited god we're looking at exodus chapter 14 exodus chapter 14 and reading from verse 13 exodus chapter 14 we're looking at verse 13 what a wonderful god was served look at verse 13 and moses said unto the people fear not fear ye not stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he will show to you today for the egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more how long forever maybe you, you've read that verse before but you don't understand oh i understand i know what it says it says stand still and see the salvation of the lord let me tell you what you don't understand these children of israel were slaves in egypt 20 years 50 years 100 years 200 years they have been there for a long time centuries and they have been oppressed by the egyptians they look that the egyptians are the most powerful they look that the egyptians as unconquerable they look that the egyptians as terrorizing masters eventually god delivered them out of egypt and now they came to the border of the river the red sea mountain on this side mountain on that side and then the Jesus were coming from behind the old master the unconquerable enemies the unconquerable oppressors oppressing them coming and they began to cry out we are done we are destroyed we're going to die is there no grave in, in Egypt who should have died over there look at what is happening now these people are going to finish us and look at what Moses says stand still don't be afraid all those things that arise to you until this day you will not be afraid of them anymore centuries of curses the Lord is going to take away tonight centuries of oppression the Lord is going to take away tonight you know the generations of curses generations of yokes generations of slavery generations of captivity generations of deformity the lord is going to take everything away in jesus name you're not going to do anything christ will do everything for you stand still and see the salvation of the lord because these egyptians terrorizing enemies who have seen all these many years you will see them again no more forever the lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace look at verse 15 and the lord said unto moses wherefore christ thou unto me speak unto the children of israel that they go forward that they go forward i said you will go forward you know count your blessings and name them one 
by one remember all that was said at the end of last year remember all that was said at the beginning of this year and then we said no loss no lack no limitation has God failed you has God failed us all the fighting of the past you know I will conquer this I'll conquer that you'll find that Calvary has destroyed the power of your enemy and all the fighting will not be necessary anymore you will move forward into the blessings of the Lord in Jesus name and then it says but thou shalt lift up verse 16 thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Well, already you've heard about the miracle. Moses stretched out the rod and the river parted for them. For the weakest of the children of Israel, the smallest of the children of Israel, the youngest of the children of Israel, and the oldest, the most aged of the children of Israel, the river was patient, remained open until everybody passed over. Can you think of, can you think of, can you think of two million people, three million people? Can you think of them? just passing over like that even if they were let's say 10,000 in a row moving it will still be a long line and then they were moving on some of them were weak some of them aged and all that and everybody passed over one by one when the last one passed over then the Egyptians they came in and they came in with confidence and with you know with real anger and they were going to destroy the children of Israel well follow them when they got to the middle God said Moses strike back the rod and the water closed on them you have overcome already every little child in this church every young person in this church the least in this church you will pass over to the other side and when you confront a Red Sea, when you confront an impassable river, that impassable river will open up before you in Jesus' name. There's a rod that is greater than the rod of Moses. It's called the rod of the stem of Jesse. And it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he stretches his power, when he stretches his grace, his authority over the river of your life, everything will divide in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 8 We're reading from verse 18 Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18 Behold I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders Behold I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and wonders Look at your family Are you a father? I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. Are you a mother? A mother there? I and the children. Signs, wonders, and miracles will come to your children. I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and wonders. Are you a leader? Sectional leader in the church? Are you a leader? A pastor in the church? Are you a leader? An overseer in the church? Are you a leader? And then you have people under your leadership. I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and for wonders. Look at this whole church. You are a child of God in this church. I want you to realize this unlimited God will begin to work wonders in your life. Here is the promise has given us as a church. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me were for signs and were for wonders. And now, believers, these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. I don't want to ask uh, the question, is any believer there? Because I know you are believers. I said I know you are believers. I said I know you are believers. These signs shall follow them that believe. Where are they? I said, where are they? 
stand up and receive signs and wonders our god is unlimited our god is unlimited our god is unlimited he can heal he can save mighty to save mighty to heal mighty to deliver mighty to set free he sets the captives free he sets the captive free Take, take away all that doubt in your mind. Don't limit God anymore. All those who limit God, they are short-sighted. God will do what he said he will do. And God will perform everything he said he will perform. Rest your mind. Rest your mind. Rest your mind. Believers are candidates for miracles. Believers are for signs and for wonders. Rest your mind. You know that this is your chance and this is your day and this is your time. You tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. There's no point in limiting God because he can do all things. And he will do all things in my life. Tell the Lord, he will do all things in your life. His promises are yes and amen. He cannot fail. He will not fail. As he said, I will not do it. As he spoken, I will not bring it to pass. You tell the Lord, Lord, I thank you. What a revelation. What a revelation. See, even those people that limited God, they were the losers. God still did what he said he will do. He still performed what he said he will perform. But you are now telling the Lord, I will not be of the number limiting God. I will not be of the number that is curtailing the power of the Lord. He can do it. He can, and he will do it. He can do it. He can do. He can do it. He can do much more, much more, much more than that. Trust the Lord. What challenge are you presenting before the Lord? Trust the Lord. What predicament did you bring here? Trust the Lord. What challenge do you face in life? Trust the Lord. What have you been expecting from the Lord? Trust the Lord. What promise has He given that looks unachievable? Trust the Lord. Any river uncrossable? Trust the Lord. Any mountain too high, too big? Trust the Lord. Any challenge? that looks so great and so high trust the Lord the old time power of the unlimited God the old time power of the unlimited God is able is able he'll, he'll quench the fury of the enemy he will put out all the fire from the enemy they'll shut the mouth of the lions trust the Lord now you know that with our God all things are possible now you know there's no limitation to the power of the Lord. There's no limitation to the might of the Lord. He's supreme. He's sovereign. He is supernatural. Release yourself into the hands of the Lord. And thereby release the hand of God to work in an unlimited way in your life he can he will he can he will miracles for everyone healing for the sick deliverance for the oppressed children for the barren jobs for the jobless happiness for the sorrowful salvation for the sinner forgiveness for the guilty strength for the weak ability for those who are impotent 
knowledge for the ignorant success for failures trust the Lord with him all things are possible trust the Lord he will not fail he cannot fail believe there shall be a performance of those things that was spoken by the mouth of the Lord something definite is taking place right now something definite something definite you not be in the presence of the Lord in vain in Jesus name we pray and the faithful believing people of God said Amen. Amen. up your hand for a definite thing from definite definite thing from the father in the name of Jesus we bless your name we know that you are the unlimited God and Lord we pray the power that created the whole universe will now work in every life in Jesus name spiritual miracle physical miracle family miracle professional miracle the desires of the people of God fulfill in Jesus name Strength for the weak, power for the powerless, miracle for those who I need. Do it in Jesus' name. I command every mountain of problem in your life, mountain, move away in Jesus' name. Every incurable disease, I take authority over you. Incurable disease, be healed in Jesus' name all those long-standing causes and yokes and problems i command all those long-standing problems get out in jesus name everything you have promised and your people are trusting you tonight let there be signs and wonders in every life manifest your power in every life lord the miracle with each person's name attached unto it give to them right now fulfill your word give miracle and give testimony to every mouth let there be at least one sign at least one wonder at least one miracle at least one healing at least one provision at least one deliverance at least one something to rejoice about for everyone in Jesus name Confirm your power in every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. The miracle is there with you already. 